Hey, Bastish BF for 64K, and welcome to another episode of Compilation Nation. And if you've never watched Compilation Nation before, basically I go through compilations of video games, whether it's digital form or physical form. We check out all the menus, we check out all the games and everything to do with them. And today's episode is about another one of the Konami 50th Anniversary compilations. This one is the Castlevania Anniversary Collection, featuring 8 Castlevania games on the Switch. So let's first take a look at the menus and the extras. Okay, so let's check out the extras first. So straight off the bat, there is way more info and content here than the previous Konami Anniversary Arcade release. We have a box art gallery featuring both English and Japanese versions of the game, except Kid Dracula of course, which was a Japan only exclusive. Next we have a lot of details about each game, like the story, gameplay mechanics, etc etc. Next is two interviews, of note is the one with longtime series associate Michiru Yamani, who did the music on many classics in the series like Symphony of the Night. We also we also have this really cool chronological timeline for the entire series, characters and all their history, followed by a massive art gallery and character design section. Overall much better than the arcade version's extras, but still no soundtrack selection unfortunately. Still, this is pretty good stuff. Okay, so now let's check out the games. Okay, so let's have a look what games are included in this collection. We got the original Castlevania, Castlevania 2, Simon's Quest, Castlevania 3, Dracula's Curse, Super Castlevania 4, Castlevania The Adventure, Castlevania 2, Belmont's Revenge, Castlevania Bloodlines, and Kid Dracula, and the bonus book, which is all the extras we just looked at. You can pause the game just like in the first collection, and you can save or load wherever you want. You've also got display settings, pretty much everything you can think of, pixel perfect, 4x3, scan lines, 16x9, everything you could want. You also have frame options if you want to put something around the border. And on that note, let's jump on over to the first game. 1987 saw the original release of Castlevania on the NES. It's the first and still really great entry in the franchise, and all the exploration, hidden items and whip slashing action is here right from the beginning. As Simon Belmont, it's your quest to kill Dracula who's just risen from the grave after his 100 year nap. The sub weapons in this game are very cool, and aren't just bonus add-ons like most games, but are vital for boss battles and surviving the castle in general. Really catchy music and good graphics, and a really great addictive quality, even though it can be pretty tough. Make this a fantastic game to play and a true Konami classic entry. Next we've got Castlevania 2 Simon's Quest, the follow up on the NES that was released in 1988. So this game is much more of an action RPG with the exploration element ramped up and a much bigger world to explore, not just Dracula's castle like the previous game. It also introduced a day night cycle which was very uncommon for a game back then. Certain things or events, for example being able to talk to townsfolk during the day, made the game's areas double as exploring them during different times changed the landscape considerably. All the whip action is still here however and the enemies are a lot trickier and harder to kill, making this entry at least for me a lot tougher but well worth the effort. Great graphics and environments and another excellent music score, fantastic game. Castlevania 3 Dracula's Curse was released on the NES in 1990 and was the swan song unfortunately for the NES series but it went out on a high note for sure. All the elements from the previous two games are here with the addition of allies joining you on your quest and being able to switch to them on the fly. They all have their own strengths and weaknesses which play heavily into boss fights and puzzle solving. Best looking game out of the three with very diverse looking locations and yet another excellent music score which you're going to hear me say quite a lot. 1991 saw the release of Super Castlevania 4 and the series jumped to Nintendo's 16-bit powerhouse, the Super NES. Story and design wise, it's a remake of the original, but goes way further than that. Dracula is being resurrected yet again and Simon has to kill him. Again. I mean really, what's the point Simon, you know he's just gonna come back right? Gameplay wise, it's more action oriented, like the original, and the difficulty this time is way down, so it's a great entry level Castlevania game to start with. Your whip can also now be used to swing as well as whipping at 360 degree angles which works really well with the Switch's analog stick. Awesome graphics and 16 bit music that sounds absolutely amazing means another must play game. 
1989 saw the release of the first handheld game in the series, titled Castlevania The Adventure on the Game Boy. Story-wise, it's a prequel to the original, taking place 100 years before, with Christopher Belmont as the lead. This is a much more action-orientated side-scroller game than before, and only features one weapon, your whip, which can be upgraded as you progress. This is an okay game in the series. I found it to be a bit too slow and a lot of cheap enemies, but as a Game Boy entry goes, with its limits, it's pretty good. Although, this is the only game here I couldn't honestly recommend, just simply due to the absolute high quality of all the other games. But the Game Boy fortunately was blessed with another entry in 1991 called Castlevania II Belmont's Revenge and it's a much better handheld Game Boy game entry in the series. Lots of improvements like much faster gameplay which the previous title suffered from greatly, more weapons to choose from and the ability to choose any of the four stages to start from. It's still gameplay wise a side scrolling action platform game but takes everything that was lacking in the adventure and fixes it perfectly. Nice graphics and some really catchy chip tune music Music make this a really excellent entry in the series yet again. Now we jump ahead a few years to 1994 with the first and only Sega Mega Drive slash Genesis release titled Castlevania Bloodlines or The New Generation depending on your region. Definitely my personal favourite in the series next to the PS1's classic Symphony of the Night. Konami knew how to push the Mega Drive to the limit and this game always made me feel that this is what a Castlevania game would be like if that crazy company Treasure had made it. Massive boss battles, fast action based gameplay, two characters to choose from. Excellent graphics and animation and a pumping soundtrack make this my personal favourite in the series. This is a must play game here and it's just a pity the Mega Drive only got one entry. 1990 was a weird year as Konami decided to release a parody of their own series called Kid Dracula. The game just like the Parodius series which pokes fun at the greatest games. This one is Lampooning Castlevania. This is an extremely fun and challenging platform adventure game that has bright colourful levels and catchy as hell music. Kid Dracula gains spells from defeating bosses and those are his weapons in game. Also of note, this is the first time this game has been released outside of Japan and it's had a full English translation as well which is excellent. This is a fun goofy game that again is well worth your time even though it's a lot tougher than it looks. Okay, my overall impressions of this compilation are as follows. Let's start with the positives. Out of the 8 games included, 7 of these are excellent. Again, like the previous collection, this works out to be just over $3 a game, which is a pretty damn good deal. The extras are a lot more comprehensive and interesting this time compared to the arcade compilation. The emulation on every game is spot on. And the only negative is, Castlevania The Adventure is pretty forgettable in my opinion. I wish they had replaced it with maybe Rondo of Blood or Symphony of the Night had taken his place in this compilation. That would have been excellent. Overall though, a must buy. If you're not familiar with the series then this is the gateway. Excellent selection with the inclusion of even an unreleased Western Territories game. M2 have yet again proved themselves the kings of the classic game re-releases. And you should also check out their excellent work on the new Sega Ages series. So as of making this video, this compilation is only available digitally unfortunately. There's no physical copies up and coming. Hopefully they will be in the future because that will be really excellent. I love physical versions of games. Anyway, it's available on the Switch, PC, Xbox One and PS4, so you're covered on all major formats. And thanks for joining me, Bastish B at 64K. If you can like and subscribe, that'll be greatly appreciated, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.